Well, hi there. Welcome to my sewing room. Let me show you inside. So this is the first time I have a dedicated sewing room, so I'm very excited to take you all around and show you around. I love watching sewing room tours, so I think it is only fair that with the amount of these that I have watched, that I should also put one out into the world. So here we go. Um, a lot of this is still a work in progress. I don't have a lot of things set up the way I want them to. So anyway, I hope this is interesting to you, and I hope you enjoy. Also, I am aware my makeup is a little bit extra, but you know what? We're still in the middle of the pandemic and we're quarantined and I haven't been able to do my makeup fancy for like six months. So this is what you get. First, we're going to do just like a general overview and then we're going to get into the nitty gritty and like dig in things because that's the best part because I'm a very nosy person. So here we have my door where we walked in. So I just have some stuff hanging on the back here. Then we have my closet. Um, and my ironing board and some other things we'll get into. Then we move over here and we have my sewing station. So we got this desk. All right, hopefully we can get through the rest of this video on one set of batteries. We got this desk when we bought our bedroom set from a really nice lady who likes interior design. So she buys furniture, stages her house with it, puts it on Facebook and then sells everything and redoes it all again. So we got this desk. Um, this chair is from our dining room set. I just needed a chair. Then we move over here. We have more storage. So this is also some recent projects I'm working on. I'll show you later. I'm really proud of those. So this is an Ikea Calyx unit and a bunch of different inserts. We'll go over all that later. Then we move over here and we have my desk, my workstation. I got this secretary desk from a really lovely little couple uh, on Craigslist, Ashley, and it is there's supposed to be a finial up there and it is exactly one eighth of an inch too tall for this room. Like if this room didn't have carpet, it would fit. We have a dressing mirror, which is, again, we got from the same lady who gave us the bedroom set. Then we move over here and we have my chaise lounge. I've always wanted a chaise lounge. Um, and I also have this cute little cow guy. Uh, these came from Wayfair and I ordered them back in like February. So this was before all the craziness happened. This is a storage unit from Michaels that just has some catch all things, old projects, and then some sweaters and stuff. And then this dresser has pattern storage, and then this is all fabric. Um, this was from my boyfriend's old room, and he didn't really want it because we have the new dresser now, so I took it. All right, so now let's actually like get digging into stuff and get nosy. Uh, so this is just a big sun hat that I bought. I have not worn yet, but I really wanted a big floppy glamour sun hat. So I bought it. Then under here we have just a clothes hanger. I have a lot of these laying around. This is a Fousey baseball cap. Um, I wear a lot of Fousey shoes, uh, dance shoes specifically. And this black and gold uh, scarf that I got in auction. Here's my graduation tassel, class of 2017. I do have a bachelor's of science in marine biology, in case you couldn't tell from the general everything. Um, this is a robe. I like having a robe nearby. Um, sometimes when I'm trying things on, I don't bother getting dressed in between things. So in case somebody like comes through the door or somebody needs my attention, I can just toss this robe on real quick. And this is my old um, name tag from the place I used to work. So this is my closet. This is my ironing board. It just kind of lives here because I don't have a better place for it. Um, so I'm going to move this out of the way. I don't know if you can see it in the shot, but I do have my dirty laundry here because the cat will pee in unattended piles of clothing and since she is never on he in here unsupervised, this is the safest place for my laundry. These are some templates for the projects over there that I've been working on. Again, I just don't have a better place for these to live, so I just stuck them to the store real quick. This is a very old house and this closet door is great. This one is a pain because it's not hung properly. Um, it's the hardware on the door, so sometimes it just doesn't open. So I'm going to bring you a little bit closer and we'll get into the nitty gritty of everything that's in here. All right. So as you can see here, here's where the air conditioning kind of input is. So that's like 18 inches of space that I don't have, but it's okay. All right. So up here we have just some kind of generic assorted crafty supplies um, that I don't really, again, have a good home for. So there's like floral tape and floral wire and some like monogram stickers and things like that in here. In here is my squid dress Halloween costume over here. And this is a thrift flip project that I started like three years ago. I just never got around to. In here is my Stardew Valley Leah cosplay, specifically the shoes. I am not a combat boot kind of gal, so they live in here. Um, we have some empty bags. These are all of my stage shoes. So all of my character shoes, my taps, um, things like that are all in here. 
All right, so this big thing right here is my jellyfish tutu. You'll see a little bit of it. Um, I just made a video about this, so if you want to go watch that, I'll try to remember to leave a link below. Otherwise, I'm sure it's easy to find. So if we take this down real quick. So in here, I have a lot of things. Um, so these are leftover scraps from my t-shirt quilt. So these are all the front pocket designs that I couldn't figure out what to do with, so I'm just hanging on to them. Uh, back here, I have some canvases. These are my smaller ones. Um, over here, this is a bunch of t-shirts that I got kind of recently um, in my adult life, but I don't really wear that often, but I want to keep them, so I just keep them in here. Down below, this is a bag full of googly eyes. This is a huge suitcase that is full of a uh, my black tutu that goes underneath my squid dress glam thing. It's like my ink cloud because I'm a squid. Anyway, so it has that tutu and it also has a nine foot long tool boa in here. Then we come up here and we have more piles of clothes. So these are things that my boyfriend gave me. This is an old shirt of his. This is a dress he ordered for me off a of wish. I have a bunch of old work shirts here that I'm kind of saving up. I want to do like an adult years t-shirt quilt blanket thing. Um, so I'm saving these up. Also I have long sleeves in here and I don't own very many long sleeve shirts. So that's what's in here. This is an old peasant top that I tried to make. Uh, this is from my cousin's wedding when we were getting ready as bridesmaids because I like having things with pockets in them, specifically frockets in them. Um, oh, I made a tutorial about making this. This is a button-down shirt. I also made a tutorial about making this dress, which I have not worn since because it's kind of awful to look at and really heavy. This is my Peggy Carter cosplay dress slash I have worn this out swing dancing so many times dress. Um, I can't really hang anything up in here because everything's so short and I need the floor storage, but yeah. Uh, this is Secret Project Box and underneath here so I have more canvases under here. These are the bigger ones. These are all projects that are fundamentally finished but have little things that I'd like to get around to, like moving some hooks and eyes, um, this shark dress right on top. I want to finish the waistband. Um, most of these you have either seen in YouTube videos or on my Instagram, which is at Thread and Needlefish. So if you want to follow me there. Um, this umbrella hanging up over here is a second line umbrella. So let's jump over to the other side. All right, so up top. So right here we have my acrylic paints. Um, way up top up there are some uh, embroidery thread and some other assorted Velcro and elastic and stuff. Um, I have a bunch of boxes of assorted fabric in sewing supplies because I have three from three different phases in my life, so I need to merge them and organize them all at some point. Um, but that day is not today. This is also a box full of metal stamping. Joanne's had a clearance sale um, at one point of a bunch of like metal stamping supplies. So I took up metal stamping for a little bit. That was pretty fun. Now we're gonna move down. This is a left shark costume. We're gonna get that out of the way. Um, that was a gift. I did not buy that. Then in here in this bag, we have some, um, this is a lot of material that I use for mock-ups. So this is a lot of flat sheets that I got from Walmart. I know muslin is like objectively cheaper, but for me it's easier to get my hands on twin size flat sheets than anything else. So that is what is in there. I also have some um, projects for a corset project that I was working on a really long time ago. So I have like spiral steel boning in there. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, this bin I have um, leftover tool pom-poms from my tool boa that I made. So I think I'm gonna have to jump in frame and like show you a lot of this. So this is all of my fabric paint and an old project for some painted shorts that, um, yeah, I started a while ago and then I gained so much weight that I don't fit into the shorts anymore. But this is where I keep my fabric paint. It's also usually where I keep my paintbrushes, but I have them out because I was recently working on things as I'm sure you can tell. So all of these decorative storage boxes either came from Joann's or Michael's. I can't tell you which one came from which because I don't remember. So this is a box full of feeding supplies. Um, so I have some fancy like animal shaped beads back here. Um, this is my college thing. These are appliques left over from my embellished dress that I made a couple of months ago. That is also a good video on my channel if you're interested. Um, this is all black trim left over from my Morticia Adams dress that I made senior year in college. 
This is, I want to show this off a little bit because it's, it's a small business that I love. This is a store called Jefferson Variety. It is in like this tiny little shop that you would never guess where it is. Um, it's in like a, a railway kind of area. It's a freight area, um, but it's not far from my house, but they do a lot of um, like Mardi Gras fabrics. So if you picture Mardi Gras and you think of like the big fancy dresses that the, the queens are wearing and like the big fancy stuff that the kings are wearing, a lot of the fabric comes from that store. So they also have a bunch of really fun sequined appliques that are amazing. So I have this little crab and a bunch of these little things. So every time I go back, I try to pick up a couple. They all, they just have like so much stuff over there. It's, it's amazing. Here we have, what do we have in here? Uh, yeah, so this is more material left over from my big red boa that I made. Um, this is leftover tool from the black tutu. I have some little lights in here. Sometimes I like putting lights in fancy costumes in case you can't tell from my everything. Um, and this is just some more like leftover stuff that I'm hanging on to for some reason. And then this is my favorite bin in my whole collection. This is my shiny things bin. So I'll bring you a little closer and we'll take a look because it's real heavy. All right, so let's take a quick look in here. And first off, we have this rhinestone chart from Looking Glass Gems. Uh, if you need rhinestone, rhinestones, Looking Glass Gems, they are comparable to Swarovski's for a fraction of the price. They are so good. They have so many colors, lots of sizes, lots of shapes. And there's one in particular that I am a little attached to. It's this one. So this is a little um, resin Rivoli Navette, and it is called Bird of Paradise. And fun fact, I actually named these. So when they first came out with these, they had a little contest over on their Instagram stories where you could like, everybody could submit their own names for it and then people would vote for them. Um, so I submitted the name Bird of Paradise and I won. So they sent me a hundred of these as my prize. So they are very, very special to me. But yeah, there's also a bunch of other. I have so many rhinestones. I, I am actually a fish. I am attracted to anything that sparkles. Um, there's also a smaller store. It is new, um, relatively new. It is called Nola Craft Culture. Um, and they have every shade of glitter you could possibly imagine in any sort of combination. And also got these little thingy things there too. Um, I also have some, I think I got these cheap from Michaels or something. These are rhinestones that I got when I was in the garment district in New York a couple of years ago. Um, I glued a bunch of these all over a pair of shoes that I have that you will have seen if you watched my shoe bag slash shoe collection video. A lot of this is going to be just like self-advertisement and I go through a lot of Altoids so you will see a lot of Altoids tins. There's also some leftover Mod Podge and glitter mix. Um, I learned from a burlesque dancer. I will link her video below but if you mix glitter into the Mod Podge and apply it like a glue, the glitter will not shed. So this is excellent. This is the best way to apply glitter. And yeah, I just have a bunch more rhinestones of different colors and sizes. Um, I also have a lot of pickle jars because I used to eat a lot of pickles and then one nearly killed me. So I don't really eat pickles anymore. Um, but I use these to store other things that I want to keep together. More rhinestones. Um, I got these from Jefferson Friday for my uh, Morticia Adams project so they are like so on deep 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 red um, rhinestones this is where i keep most of my other rhinestones so i have a bunch of these laying around i just i like sparkly things okay let's move on so down here we have this is a box full of shoes that i don't have room in my closet for so these are all my like sparkly fancy kind of shoes that i don't ever actually wear out um, so I keep these in here because I don't ever reach for them. Uh, that's just some boxes of toiletries and stuff from my old bathroom that doesn't fit in the new bathroom because we have surprisingly little under the counter storage in the new bathrooms. So this kind of lives in here because it doesn't have a good place to hang out yet. Then we move on to my sewing station. So this is where I do most of my sewing, my iron and my new steamer. They kind of hang out back there because I don't really have a good place to put them. Normally they hang out down here, but I was digging in here for a face mask yesterday, so they're up there. Um, I am in the process of acquiring, either through buying or making, a second pin tomato to put all of my hand needles in. Um, I took about 20 minutes a couple of days ago and fished out all of my pins and all of my needles from my pin tomato. Um, so these are all my hand needles. 
and they just live in this little cork thing. And if you don't have a cork desk pad for right under your sewing machine, I highly recommend one. It is very convenient to be able to just shove pins in there. This is my sewing machine. You have seen this many times before, I'm sure. Singer Heavy Duty. I don't remember the n model number, but it's the one that has the more stitches on it. Uh, so this is a bobbin that the cat stole from me one day. Um, and I didn't realize that she stole it until a couple of days ago. I hear a chewing on plastic noise, which if you have a pet, you are familiar with the chewing on plastic noise, aka the chewing on something they're not supposed to be chewing on noise. And I hear it from directly underneath the middle of our king size bed. And the cat got a hold of this bobbin. And as I will try to show you, don't know if the autofocus will work. Um, it has little teeth marks in it. Little, little kitty teeth marks. And she does this, and the only time she does things that she's not supposed to do, and she knows she's not supposed to, she does them right in the middle underneath of our king bed, which is the one place in the house where we cannot reach her. So I had to do like a combat crawl to try to get this out. She's a mess. Cats, what are you gonna do? So let's move on to the rest of my desk. This is bottled water. This is not for me. This is for my iron and my steamer uh, because they are picky and need distilled water. This is just some spray-on glue that I found when I was cleaning this out. Then we have a waste basket. So I keep this one is a tiny one on my desk. Um, I use it for threads and fabric scraps as I'm sewing. This is an empty tin full of uh, bent pins. So I hold on to these and throw them away all at once because I don't really like throwing away pins just directly into the garbage. I like putting them in something first. Here we have all of my scissors. So we have my pinking shears. These are my fabric scissors. These are my generic scissors. Um, these are a pair of tailor shears that I got for six dollars at a um, my favorite little thrift store or vintage store in Louisiana and I need to get them sharpened and um, restored. That's the word. I need to get these restored. Um, I just haven't found anybody around here yet to do that. Then we have a box cutter. So this is my like cutting instrument thing container. Then we have my writing instrument container. So I have a bunch of pens, I have a highlighter, we have some Sharpies, some pencils. This is my magic magnetic pin wand. Um, I also have a chopstick and a metal straw for turning loops. Um, I used to use exclusively chopsticks and pencils and pens and stuff and whatever I had. Um, but recently I had the idea of using a metal straw because it doesn't have um, like a wood grain to it. So it's not rough and it won't catch on any really delicate fabric, so I really like using this metal straw. And then to bring you in even closer yet again, you will see a sneak peek of the uh, next big project that I'm going to be working on. We have the pin tomato. That is the sound of my light. Um, so this is my little holy grail container of storage. Um, so up top we have anything relating to hand sewing. So these are hand needles. Um, my seam ripper, tiny scissors. I have two seam rippers in here, actually. Then this one is supposed to be for like buttons and things. So it just, everything kind of got mixed up. Um, so I have some machine needles, I have some snaps, I have measuring tapes, I have so many of these little needle threaders that I don't use. Uh, and my fray check, my good and trusty fray check. Um, there's also a glasses repair kit because some of my sunglasses, the screws will come loose and then I gotta fix them so that they stay on my face. And then down here is a bunch of different closure methods as well as a couple extra feet. This is kind of a, a catch-all right now. So I have some um, modern hooks and eyes. I have a lot of vintage hooks and eyes because they're really cheap at my favorite little antique shop in New Orleans. Um, some more machine needles, some more little appliques under here, a little bit of bias tape. This one's just kind of a little bit of a, it's a mess. So I just, we're gonna leave that there. So let's talk artwork for a second. So if you've been watching me for a while, you recognize this painting. This used to be hanging over my desk at the old house. I did this probably about a month after I moved into the Florida house. Um, so this is a magnolia. It's my favorite flower. I'm very proud of it. So I hung it right back up above my sewing machine. Looks nice, very proud of it. Over here, this is a faux stained glass window that I made as a prop for Romeo and Juliet, Choose Your Own Ending. Um, which was my very last production in college. I was the assistant director for it, or I was one of the assistant directors for it, um, but we needed like a chapel scene, so I made this stained glass. Um, so this is not meant to be actual Jesus. 
um, if you are super religious and you're worried about it and you see it. This is not actual Jesus. Um, my freshman year, we did a show called Reefer Madness. And if you are familiar with that movie and that show, this is the rock star Jesus. Um, so this was kind of a little throwback. And then I also have this little um, halo crown that I have spray painted skewers on. I haven't finished it yet. It's a work in progress, but that lives there. I thought this was a nice appropriate place for it. And this is just a floating shelf that I think I got at like Walmart. All right, so hopefully you can kind of see most of what's going on. So back here, I have a roll of craft paper. I used to use this for drafting and pattern drafting a lot. I learned recently I prefer newsprint. And I just think it's easier to work with and it doesn't roll up, um, but I keep this back here. This big cardboard box is actually my BOSU ball, which I haven't blown up in like four years, which is a shame. I need to get back on that. And then if we come closer and look under here, so this is all fabric storage and this is all stuff that I organized right before the move. So I think what I decided this big bin is, this is apparel fabrics that have specific projects or are relating to specific projects. So I have a bag in here of like stuff for my corset that I wanted to make a long time ago. There's a lot of leftover scraps from a bunch of old projects in here. Um, this blue bin up here is fabrics that either cannot be washed or have not been washed. This bag right here is full of six yards of a cotton twill. A, I think it's a stretch cotton twill. I just got it from Mood Fabrics and maybe you guys can help me out with something real quick. I have a project in mind for this fabric that involves um, basically making a ladies three-piece suit, um, but it is a gender bend of a cosplay, specifically of Hades from Hades Town. Um, so I want to gender bend that, but he wears a pinstripe suit. But for the life of me, I cannot find a black pinstripe material right now. I can find brown pinstripe material and I can find cream pinstripe material, but I cannot find black pinstripe material. And I also cannot find black pinstripe material with metallic threads. And I know it exists because I have seen it multiple times throughout the course of my life every time I've gone to a fabric store. But for some reason, it does not exist right now. Like, I can't find it anywhere. I've tried Joann's, I've tried Hobby Lobby, I have tried Mood, I have tried um, like fabrics.net. I have tried all of the major like on online sewing retailers and I cannot for the life of me find black pinstripe material. So if you know somewhere where I can find a good black pinstripe material, please let me know. I would really appreciate it. Otherwise I will have to pinstripe this by hand because I also cannot for the life of me uh, sew a straight line on a sewing machine. So this will have to be pinstriped by hand with metallic thread otherwise. So I'm putting this off for as long as I can because hopefully, hopefully I can find this black metallic pinstripe fabric. All right, now let's move on. All right, so like I said earlier, this is an Ikea Calyx unit. This is actually the most recent addition to my sewing room. Um, apparently Ikea at three o'clock on a Friday afternoon is the place to be. Anyway, so let's break this down a little bit. So over here we have um, this is my little moving desk light. I just don't have a good place to put this right now. None of my other desks have a good, like, ledge for this to clip onto. Um, so this lives here. So this first drawer over here, I have buttons. So I have, um, some boxes of buttons. Uh, this is a recent one that I just bought a couple of weeks ago. So this is a bunch of vintage buttons that I need to go through. And then this is a box of, I have a mix of some modern and vintage buttons. It's mostly vintage that I got from, again, my favorite little antique shop in uh, New Orleans. I'll try to remember to link that below because I've mentioned that so many times. Most of these are vintage from there. Um, a lot of my modern buttons I keep in my little blue thing on my desk. But this is what I have in here. And these drawer units, as well as these little pulled units, are from Ikea. They are made to go specifically in this unit. So the second drawer I have over here are my batteries. And this is the project that I've kind of been working on uh, regularly. So I also have um, some electrical tape and a bunch of EL wire, as well as I only have one battery pack left. I've been getting a little creative. Um, but I have a bunch of colors of EL wire that I've been playing around with, so that I keep in here. Um, this is just a bin of paperwork, so anything important that I need to uh, know where it is. So important paperwork goes in here. Uh, this is one of the projects that I was working on, and I don't know how well it will show up because it's daytime, but this is phony on EL wire sign. 
and I'm really happy with it. Uh, and then this is the kind of bigger one that I've made. I haven't finished the back of these, which is why they are um, falling apart a little bit and why they are still here and not hanging up. But this is the big one that I made that I'm super happy with. Um, I painted this and then put the wire on. And then this one up here was the first one that I made. This was the proof of concept. This was the test piece. And we have some giant pink lips that I thought were really cute. So I'll move on. We have a little cat cubby um, for Lil's. She doesn't come in here all that often because um, she prefers to hang out with her dad. But if it's like three in the morning and I'm still up working on something, sometimes she'll come and sleep in here for the night. This right here is um, my spray paint and my like paint palettes, things that I don't want the cat getting to. Um, so that lives in here, all nice and tucked away. Then in here, in this drawer, we have some projects that I was supposed to work on for some people that I haven't gotten around to yet. Oh, I'm sorry. And then up top we have hair stuff. So I usually do my hair and makeup in here, so I just keep my hair stuff in here. Hairspray, a couple different brushes, my curl and iron, all that good stuff. Down here we have a bunch of binders. Um, so after 10 years of owning my ukulele, I finally sat down last month and put all of my tabs and all of my cord sheets into these little protectors and put them in a nice little binder. Um, so this is some ukulele stuff, uh, Adidas book, this is um, just a lot of assorted projects and things I've been working on, um, some patterns, some old scripts from shows I was in, um, a bunch of sketchbooks, little things that I'm working on, so those live there. So moving on, this bin right here is kind of a catch-all bin. Um, I just have a lot of random stuff in here, some shoe bags for the shoes that um, are hanging in their organizer in my closet, so I'm just hanging on to them. Bunch of empty storage project bags, um, just a lot of random stuff. This bin right here is where I keep my microphone. So this is um, everything set up, just ready to go. I just gotta pull it out. And you're supposed to like mount it onto something, but I just hold it because it will damage whatever you mount it on. So this is more sewing supplies. This is a scrap piece of fabric that I use to test stitches on and stitch with and all that. This is a coffin that I painted a couple of years ago with this little octopus on it. And this is where I keep my bobbins. Uh, it's not the most efficient bobbin storage, but it's what I have. Uh, this is a another one of those Rubbermaid bins full of assorted sewing supplies. This one has a lot of zippers in it. Um, again, this is just more stuff that I had organized at one point in my life, but now I need to combine it with all the other stuff that I have. This is an old box, and this is where I keep all of my thread. Some of this, um, like all these Guterman threads and this really old one. Um, I stole a lot of these from my mom back in the day, and I still use this because um, back in high school, I would bring my point shoes to school in these to sew them, and I would sew them during study halls. Um, most of my teachers were okay with it because I was a really good student. I was always on top of my stuff, but I had a couple teachers that were not okay with it. And I'm like, I've done all of my homework and all of my studying. Like, just let me, I'm not bothering anybody. Just let me sit here and do this in peace. Anyway, so we move on. So real quick, let's talk about this privacy film. This is the privacy film that you've probably seen going around the internet that um, at the right angle, the sun will cast rainbows in the room and I really love it. All right, so I have no idea if you're actually gonna be able to see any of this. Um, so over here we just have some more stuff. This is a chom chom. If you have a pet that has hair, you need one of these. It gets hair off of everything like that. It's amazing. Um, highly recommend. This is a lamp that used to be on my nightstand. My nightstand. We have new nightstand lamps now. Um, I'm looking for a good place for this to live in here, but I just can't find one. Uh, this is how we tell if my boyfriend watches my videos or not, because this is my secret snack stash. Um, I have some Twix and some Reese's Bats right now because it is September, which means it is officially Halloween, um, and some strawberry vampire kisses. They're not that great, but sometimes you just need some chocolate. Uh, Q-tips because I pr pretty much just live in here. Tissues. Um, this bin right here is hard drives and file flash drives and file storage and some um, silicone samples that I got at an aquarium convention a couple of years ago. Um, yeah, uh, old phones, things that I'm kind of holding on to for some reason. I don't know. Those live in here. This is a shark with a freaking laser on it. Um, this was a birthday present from my mom a couple of years ago, uh, but it's a laser pointer and I play with a cat with it. Usually it lives in the living room. Um, I brought it in here once and it just hasn't made its way back out. This box over here is tools and hanging supplies. So I have some screwdrivers, um, some gorilla hooks. I have a bunch of command strips and command hooks. Um, this is hardware to 
actually like mount photo or mount uh, canvases on the wall. So this is like a comb for it. Um, so that is what is in there. And again, these are just boxes that I have from Joann's or Michael's and I have more of these in a different um, room in the house. So let's come down here real quick. Ah! So let's come down here real quick, nothing too crazy or special. So this is the box my microphone used to live in. Um, it's empty right now, but it still has a purpose because this is my box of stuffed animals because I am a grown adult. Also, I'm a marine biologist and how will people know that if I don't have, you know, a box full of aquatic stuffed animals and one cat that was a friend from my, uh, a present from my friend. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, the cat will pee in any unattended piles of uh, fabric. So I don't want her getting in here and peeing in it. So that's what that's for. Uh, there's also my laptop case that just kind of hangs out back there. All right, so now I'm gonna hold on to you for a little bit. So I apologize for um, my shaky hands and also this piece of dust that is on the lens right now. That's not a ghost following us around, that's, that's dust. Um, so this is my desk and I'll show you what is up top in this section. All right, so we open this up. This is a single bead that I got from when I went home for Mardi Gras last year. I brought my boyfriend. Um, he wanted to experience Mardi Gras. So let's start from the top. So up here we have a bunch of presents from family members. So these are a bunch of goblets that came from my parents' house. Um, I think they were my dad's, so my mom didn't really want them anymore. Um, this little owl guy is uh, my friend. I was really into Halloween stuff for a while, and why wouldn't you be? I also have this crow in the back. And this little golden parakeet guy is really new. I just got him at Hobby Lobby the other day, and I thought my other birds would like some friends. So these martini glasses up there are a set from the college drama club and I use specifically this one in a production of Company where I was Joanne and her big number at the end is Ladies Who Lunch, which she sings as a toast. So I was drinking out of this glass and my uh, little lipstick prints are still in there. So they were going to get rid of these before I left. So I took them since they're sentimental. This is stuff from, or that's eyelashes and a little martini glass from my recent production of The Producers. There's also a little bullet in there. One of the guys in the cast is a um, like metal turner. He, he works with metal. Um, so he made bullets for all of us. And if you're familiar with the plot of the producers, you will understand why that makes sense. Um, this bag right here is full of lapel pins. I collect lapel pins. So if you're interested in seeing a grand tour, uh, go ahead and let me know because I have uh, most of them are in my mother's house in Louisiana, but I do have some of them here. Uh, then we move down here. I also got this skull guy from NOLA Craft Culture. Um, I have plans to paint him and cover him in glitter. Um, this is a little whale and I keep my Bath & Body Works scent portables in here. Um, I've had this guy for a very long time. I have some ears, so I got these from when I worked from the mouse. Because um, let me tell you, working at Epcot, having a two hour lunch break, uh, and also working during the Food & Wine Showcase. Oh, it's so good. Best, best time ever. This is a cup full of stuff that I stole from my old job. Um, it's not stealing if your boss expressly tells you that you can take it. This is just a light up shark. Um, more pickle jars full of sparkly things. These are the really, really cheap rhinestones from Michael's, like the $10 for all that. Yeah, they're not good quality. Um, these are little things that came in the king cakes. My mom sends me a king cake every year around Mardi Gras time. So the company that she sends um, also sends out these little ceramic figures in there. So those are from that. Then we move down to my books and my bookshelf. So over here we have a bunch of old um, notebooks and notepads and journals and um, agendas and things like that. These are old Nancy Drew books from 1956 that I got at Renegers Antique Market in uh, Florida. Um, these are two uh, DVDs from high school productions. Uh, William Shakespeare Star Wars, highly recommend these. Um, they're so funny, they're so good. Uh, this was a good book, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, because duh. These are all um, antique and older books. Um, this is an old cookbook that my mom had from 1944. Um, so I stole it because she doesn't use it. Um, this is Southern Sideboards, which is a recipes from the Junior League of Jackson, Mississippi. So this one's from, I think the late seventies, early eighties. And I got this at my, uh, it's called Blue Moon Antiques. Um, it's really close to where I live. So I just picked that up. And then I got these two books, which I think this one is from the thirties um, and it's art in home and clothing. And then I think this one's from the forties, which is an etiquette book. So I haven't read through these yet. 
um, but I'm looking forward to it. Another light up shark. This one's a USB one, so I don't use them a lot. Uh, and then we have my little tribute to my beloved Drew. Um, Drew was my pet betta fish that I had for almost three years and he died after a tragic accident. Still not over it and it's been like three years. So I have this little portrait that I did a long time ago of him. Uh, I did that when he was still alive because he would hide in this little crusty crab and he would go in he would like put his little chain in the window. Um, so I kept that from him to remind me. All right, so let's move on to my desktop. So I have my, um, I always have a cup of water on my desk. This is a, um, I'm not entirely sure what this is, but I've been using it as a coaster. I got it as a promotional material from Macna a couple years ago. So I've been using that. This is my laptop. It is an Asus something. I don't know. Um, but this is what I'm using. Here I have my uh, makeup brushes. I keep them in old candle containers that I've cleaned out and recycled. Uh, this is the lip gloss I'm wearing today. It's a mini of the Fenty Gloss Bomb in Fussy. This is, um, so this is supposed to be my bullet journal for this year and my planner, uh, but 2020. So yeah, it's a mouse pad now. This is a little uh, phone stand that I got at Ikea. These are some books that I think are going to live in the outside, not the outside, the living room bookcase, not this bookcase. So I have the Three Musketeers. I feel like I pretended to read this in high school for AR points and I got the points, but I don't remember what happens. And then I just got this, the Shell Collector's Handbook. I thought it would be handy to have. Um, I also like looking at the like patterns on all the shells. Um, I kind of have this idea in the back of my head for like a marine biology inspired fashion line. Um, so I like having this out and I like having the pictures to refer to. This is an old recipe box that I am uh, putting online. It has a lot of handwritten recipes in here. I'm most of the way through. Um, I have about probably a quarter left to do. Um, if you are interested in seeing what's in here, check out someone else's grandma's recipes dot .com. That is where I am keeping all of the um, recipes. I have both pictures of the actual recipe themselves and then I typed everything out to put it onto the website so that you know you can search it and some in case you can't read cursive very well or some of it's really tiny um, and I had to or damaged I it's on there. These back here are a bunch of uh, mini perfume samples from a brand called I think it's French Sucre Abel or something Su Sucre Abel Sucre Abel I don't know, something like that. Um, but I ordered a bunch of perfume samples from them and they live over here because they are slightly too tall to go in any one of these little drawers. Um, this is hand cream that I've been using right now. Um, I used to use a different brand, but then I tried this one and it is the best scent that Bath & Body Works has come out with in the past, like, I don't know, 10 years? This is, it's so good. So now let's get into some of my uh, drawers and compartments. This is a book of checks. Um, I do some subscription stuff, so I am a Scentbird subscriber, so I keep my little Scentbird cards in here. Um, this is my Function of Beauty info card. This is a sketch that is not in the right place. This is one of those. My cousins had one very similar to this. Theirs had little like wheels in it and stuff uh, growing up, and I always loved these things, and I really wanted one. And then I was at Cracker Barrel a couple years ago, and I saw it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm an adult. I can just buy one. So I got one. And I love this little thing. Uh, but this is a timer. Uh, back here I have some little notepads that I've been scribbling in for a while. Let's see. Over here I have some assorted, if I ever wanted to write letters, so I have some stickers, um, some little cactus thank you notes. Um, my cousins embossed these for us for Christmas a couple years ago. In here we have, these are playbills and programs from my friends. Um, recitals and things and playbills from shows that I've been in. So I keep these here. Um, we have another tin of Altoids, brand new. Um, I just bought these notebooks. I have no use for them, but there's a shark on there. And that is the easiest way to make Sam buy something she doesn't need is put a shark on it. Um, so I got these from Target very recently. So this one's like aquatic themed. This one has a bunch of bugs on it. This one has like plants and fun fungi. So um, I have a pencil sharpener. This was a desk or like office supply set that I got from Joann's. Uh, it was on clearance sale, as you can tell. I have a whole bunch of sticky notes. Some of these are, um, they're mostly post-it, but then this one is uh, knock knock, just high five. Yeah, um, so drawers. In here I have tiny sticky notes. Um, in here I have a little desk badminton set. 
this is headphones, uh, my business cards, pens and things. This was this is a present from my mom. It doesn't write very well, uh, but yeah. Uh, in here we have stamps, and then in here we have rubber bands, and then this one has little organza bags in it, but it's stuff in there, so I won't mess around with it. And the cool thing about this being a secretary desk is I can just close it all off. Um, it doesn't have like a cable thing because this was before, you know, the era of cables. Sorry, I live right next to an Air Force base, so if you ever watch my video and hear like a random plane going by that seems like it's way too close, that's why. And then my phone, obviously I, I always have my phone. Anyway. And since this is a secretary desk, I can just fold it up and then these two things go back in. So now let's go through what's in all of my drawers. And this chair is the same one from the old house. It's just a little saucer swivel chair that I got from Ross. All right, so let's get into some drawers. So this right here is my ukulele. Again, I don't really have a great place for him to live. I'm kind of thinking of putting him on the wall, like mounting him on the wall. Um, I have some hardware in here. Uh, some hardware is actually right here. Um, so this is some mounting hardware for um, instruments. I got it for the ukulele. Haven't put it up yet. I actually got this for the old house, um, but I'm not uh, completely sure if that's what I wanted. I have other plans. I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, but this is my prototype face mask that I made because we are in the time of COVID. Um, these are some drawer pulls, cabinet pulls from my old job that my boss insisted I take. Uh, so I have them. Over here we have all of my um, Bath and Body Works wallflower stash. Um, so these are, that's old. Um, but this is where I keep all my little wallflowers. Um, I have one in the wall over there. Um, this is also my uh, visor clip things that they have. Uh, I don't have any in my car right now because I actually have a new car and it still has that new car smell. So I'm, I want to keep that as long as I can. Lots of hand sanitizer, um, all that good stuff. These are some project specific things. So this is a box full of ribbon. I have some embroidery hoops, some more ribbon that doesn't fit in the box full of ribbon. This is a um, sleeve that I'm making to cover this up so that I can go on stage and not have to slather it in makeup all the time uh, working on it. Haven't made much progress because I haven't had a show in, or I haven't been on stage in way too long. Anyway, um, this is a jar full of little baggies. I keep these for like my rhinestones. Um, so when I get down to having just a tiny mount left, I can put them in here. Um, also a pro tip, if you work with rhinestones or small beads or things that you need to stick on, don't get one of those like wax pens. It's not worth it. Go get yourself this kneaded eraser um, and just stick a little glob on this on the end of a chopstick. And yeah, it's, it's perfect. It works great. This is a big block of uh, beeswax that I got for a woodworking um, ring kit. Um, and it came with everything inside of it except for the beeswax. And I couldn't find any um, small, hunk of beeswax so I wound up buying a pound of it so I have a pound of beeswax that I don't quite know what I'm gonna do with. Uh, this is a bunch of uh, jewelry making supplies so this is my awl, some needle nose pliers, uh, beading things, uh, things like that. There's Here's a jump ring opener because I like using jump or um, split rings not jump rings. And I keep these arranged like that to keep this jar from moving around. Then in this drawer we have um, these are all my gouache paints in more uh, dip and pickle jars. Uh, this is a little coloring book that, yeah, it, it was in the clearance rack and it got me. Um, I have some watercolor paper. This is my like wood carving ring set thing. Uh, I made a couple. It was fun. It was like 20 bucks on Amazon. Yeah, we have glues. So I have white electrical tape. I have some Mod Pod, Gemtac Tacky Glue, He6000, um, hot glue. Yeah, lots of stuff hanging around in here and some magnets. And then in this bottom drawer, we have that's my leftover window cling, these um, drafting rulers that were gifted to me, as well as this pants thing um, that's supposed to help you fit and draft pants patterns. Um, eventually, I'm going to try to play around with this. I just 
All right, so I figured it out, and I think what's happening with my camera is that it's overheating, and that's wearing down my batteries faster, so it is resting, and we'll probably do the rest of this on my phone. So over to this side of my desk is where I keep um, my rulers. So I have this yardstick. I have this quilting ruler. Um, that is, This has come in so much handy. Like, it's great. Um, this is my skirt marker, which I have not been able to use yet, um, but that lives there. Down here I have, this is a bunch of hair stuff, um, like pin, clip, pin curl clips and some gel and some stuff like that. And we come over to the mirror. Um, we have my backpack behind there. So then we move over to my chaise lounge. Um, so this is a Mexican blanket that was a present um, for Christmas, my very first um, Christmas in Florida. It was from my boyfriend at the time, and it's not super comfy, so underneath I have this uh, Scooby-Doo blanket that I've had since second grade, but, you know. Um, this pillow and this pillow I just got, like, three days ago at Pier, not Pier 1, um, what is it? Home Goods. It's next to the Pier 1, that's it. Um, at Home Goods, so I, I took everything off and washed it, and this is my peep I got at Walmart. Um, giant peep, I love her. Uh, moving up here, we have these frames. I got the frames from Joanne, and then the uh, paintings inside are from an artist named Liana He. So these are the fairies from Midsummer Night's Dream. So we have Titania in the middle, and then right now we have, I think this is Moth, and you have Peas Blossom up there, and then this is Mustard Seed, and then this is Cobweb. So I keep them up here. They are really pretty, and I like them. All right, so this is what I'm currently reading, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Jules Verne. I feel like it is quintessential marine biology literature, um, so I am reading through that. I have a bunch of storage underneath here. So right here I have all of my nail polish. Um, this is a project that I tried to make but failed miserably at. This is all my hair dye. Um, also under here in the back I have more layers and layers of storage. This is just kind of extra stuff that I couldn't put away from the old house. Um, back there we have um, again more just stuff that was hanging around my desk of the old house. And then back here like there are my suitcases, my, um, not really suitcases, they're duffel bags, um, so I have two of those, and they are shoved back there because I'm not using them, because who is traveling in the middle of a pandemic? So we'll move over here to this unit. So this little basket I got at Hobby Lobby, but I have plans, um, and I've done this before, I have another one at my mom's house, um, but I have plans to cut this and then cut the bottom out, and then it makes a really nice little shelf for ice dyeing, because you can just lay it, or wrap it around a, um, like Rubbermaid bin and then put your ice on top and it melts into it. Um, so I like that. So I'll have plans for another project for that. There's a candle warmer, headband, masking tape, um, grandpa sweater in case it gets cold, another robe, um, a little shawl. Again, this is where I keep my camera equipment. So my tripod and my camera usually live there. There's a bunch of, um, like camera phone mounts and phone lenses and stuff in there. Almost none of them fit because I have a life proof case on this thing because again I'm a marine biologist and spend a lot of time in and around water so life proof case is a good idea for someone like me. And then down here um, I got this bag at Georgia Aquarium when I was an intern there on my last day. I thought it was really cute. Um, and then these are whale shark bags and some other assorted sharks, uh, like a hammerhead shark. Um, so I used to make these back in the day. So these are ones that I have either finished or have a little bit of finishing left to do. Um, a couple of these I need to put the zippers in. Um, but I used to make and sell these on Etsy. So if you're interested in me doing that again, let me know. I just... You know, I haven't been selling much. Um, and then this is also a little portable fan. It takes D batteries, which we don't have in the house, so that's why I am not using it. And then again, this is my quilt bag. You will see everything that is in here at some point in the eventual future, hopefully before the end of the year. And then this is my little Bath and Body Works wallflower. It is a blue beta fish, um, so it reminds me of Drew, and that's why he lives in here. All right, so I'm sorry about my shaky hands. I'm deficient in many things. Um, but here is my dresser. So let's go over what's on top here. So this uh, was my boyfriend's and he didn't want it. So I figured this would be a good way to store patterns that I'm working on. I also have, I don't know if I can reach it very well, but I also have face mask patterns in here because COVID. So these are some pretty special little frames for me. So right before I left the Florida house, I picked some flowers in the spring and then I pressed them. So this is a uh, passion flower. We had some passion flowers growing. These are, um, they call them swamp lilies, um, but they're, they're little white flowers. And then we had some of these 
uh, this one came from work actually this is an elderflower so this is elderberry flower and then we had some giant hibiscus bushes in uh, right in front of our front door so this is a yellow one and then we also had these really pretty these are leaves these are not the flowers but the really pretty purple leaves and then some more of these little white flowers um, I also like to smell good when I work so this is this is an awesome set. I used to keep this in my dance bag when I would dance and then have to go to work in the morning. This is like a new Bath and Body Works. I promise I do not wear only Bath and Body Works. I wear a lot more like actual fancy perfume. Um, but this is also a really, really, really good scent and I like this a lot. But if you wear this, every fruit fly in a three mile radius will be attracted to you. So be prepared to be swatting away gnats all day if you wear this. But oh, it's so pretty. I hate that it does that. Um, here's a bunch of little... Uh, jewelry pieces that my boyfriend got me off of Wish. Uh, he said there are a couple more on the way, so I'm waiting for those to come in before I put them away. Here are all of my um, fake pearls. So I got this at my Louisiana antique shop. Um, I got these at Charming Charlie's right before my high school graduation. And then I got these at my local new antique shop like a couple weeks ago. Um, so they are out with this toothbrush because I need to clean them, give them a really gentle cleaning. So they're out to remind me to do that. Then we have more Altoids. Um, you may have seen this at the old house. This used to hold beads and sparkly things. Now it holds Kinder Surprise toy, Kinder Surprise egg toys. Then we have all of my patterns. So I recently went through and organized all of them. So in this one, I have my 1940s, 50s, 60s, and my 80s. No, my 90s patterns. So these are all... Uh, vintage patterns and the reason I have them jumped around like this is because this is 70s and 80s and this one is entirely 70s So I have a lot of 1970s patterns again. They were given to me. Um, so that's why I have so many These are my self-drafted patterns. Most of them are on newsprint. So this is a necktie um, I was thinking about working on didn't quite work out um, then in here we have these are my like modern patterns ones that are meant to be modern and not meant to be anything and also my vintage inspired patterns they look like they should be kind of from the 40s or the 50s but they're not so those are in there these are my costumey and historical kind of patterns in here so um, corsets I also have all of Angela Clayton stuff because I really want to support her and I like her work uh, these are all vintage reproduction patterns so these are modern reprints of vintage patterns so like um, these are the 60s and then it goes earlier as it goes further back all right almost done uh, so this is the dresser this is a bit of a junk drawer right now so I have lots of newsprint and tissue paper and there's a petticoat back there and some leftover fabric from recent projects, some remnants that I haven't put away yet. Um, this is my embroidery project, my cross stitch project that I've been working on for uh, a year now. Uh, maybe I'll pick that up recently. So this is kind of like the catch-all drawer. Um, there's nothing too special about that. Then in this drawer, we're missing a pull over here. Uh, this drawer is small cuts of apparel fabric. Um, so I have this tool, this is red. Um, cotton that I use to line my shark bags with. I have two yards of this really pretty uh, fabric. I also have two yards of this octopus stuff because it's so cool. Um, there's lots of stuff in here. If you want like a fabric tour, uh, let me know because there's just so much. But in general, these are like apparel fabrics and things I would actually wear. Um, yes, I guess including the glitter sharks. So I have all of those. Oof. Get out of here. And then in this drawer um, are more of my like crafty fabrics. Um, so it was organized and then I started making stuff again and I just kind of shoved stuff in. So these are um, a lot of quilting cottons. These are fat quarters, uh, things that I wouldn't necessarily make clothing out of, but sometimes I pull some of these for um, linings and facings and stuff like that. So I have a lot of fat quarters, a lot of remnants, all kinds of fun stuff in there. This next drawer is full of t-shirts that my boyfriend selected to uh, have me make him a t-shirt quilt. So uh, I would like to do that soon so that I can have this drawer for more fabric storage. And then down here, uh, this is a bunch of fabric that I had kind of scattered around the house in different places uh, for the old house. And yeah, didn't really have a place for that. So in here we have another broken thing. Great. And I just broke my nail on that. Ow. All right, so in here we have uh, more leftover quilting cottons. A lot of these are 
um, from my shark bag days. So a lot of these are matched up to make shark bags. I just haven't gotten around to doing them. Um, and also just some other remnants and more fun fabrics. But these are again all quilting cottons and fat quarters. And a couple of remnants in there too. And then under here is where I just have my um, paint brushes stored. Just because the box fits so nicely under here and I don't really have a better place to put them. So paint brushes. And then I have my little sleeve board tucked in over there. That was my sewing room tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I love watching these, so I figured it is only fair that I put one out into the world. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see how this changes over the next couple of years. I do have some things like this big blank wall that I would like to do something with, and I haven't quite decided what I want to do with it. Um, so, you know, if you have any comments or suggestions on how I can make things uh, better in here or look better, especially with lighting, and if you have any suggestions on how to make that better, let me know, because I'm a little stumped right now. Um, yeah, we'll figure it out. But anyway, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.